It's a tragic event that shocked the world and 25 years on, astonishing to think it's been 25 mm. years, there are still questions and conspiracy theories about how Princess Diana died. Controversial new documentary looks in detail at the police inquiries after the crash that claimed her life. And for the first time, we get an insight into the investigations that were carried out in the months and years that followed. Uh, and that was David Douglas, the senior investigating officer for the Met at the time. Wow. At the time, um, when you were called upon to do this, what were your emotions and thoughts going into it? Because you were going to have to face Prince Charles and put to him some very serious conspiracy theory allegations that it would have involved him in some of the allegations. Yes, eventually it did lead to Lord Stevens and I interviewing uh, Prince of Wales in December 2005. But before that, Rambia, when, when we first started Operation Paget, which was in January 2004, the first emotions really are, yes, it's different. You can't deny it's a different investigation. But the main thing is, it's just a lot of work going to be involved in it. And so you concentrate on getting a team together, getting a really good team together, which we did. The Padgett team were fantastic. Small group of officers, about 12 of us, all came together. Uh, really just good working class detectives who know what they're doing. You know, they, they kind of left their egos at the door and said, right, we're going to get on and do this. And when you've got a team like that, with a challenge as big as this, it actually isn't that difficult because you can rely on the officer and, to do the work just, for you. David, put us inside that room yeah. when you're interviewing the future king yeah. about these conspiracy theories. And some of them involved the theories, the royal family and yeah. whether they'd had some kind of involvement <coughs> in Princess Diana's death, all of, it, all of which was, was disproven yeah. uh, eventually. What was it like then in that room and what was his demeanour like when you were having to put these very difficult questions to him? Well, I think probably it's best if I first explain why Lord Stevens and I went to interview the Prince of Wales. And it really stems back to what's now referred to as the Burrell Note mm. in yes. 1995. Yes, yeah. that appeared on the front page of the Daily Mirror in 2003, which is a genuine note. Diana wrote it and left for Paul Burrell, where she refers to my husband, who's looking to get rid of me, set me aside, and Camilla, as it happens. Um, and of course, she didn't mention him by name, but saying her husband, she obviously meant Prince Charles. So it was because of that note that she wrote in 1995 that we, we had to see Prince Charles. Because in actual fact, when you look at all the other work we did, there was absolutely nothing anywhere that indicated Prince of Wales had anything to hide. He wasn't involved in it in any way, shape or form. But we had to deal with this particular issue, otherwise we would have been criticised. So what was it like? Were you nervous going into the room or how was it? And yes. how was he? Was he nervous? Uh, he didn't appear to be nervous. It's one of those uh, days uh, where it was remarkable because, you know, you don't always go into St James's Palace with, for me, the ex-commissioner who'd been in charge of me, uh, to interview, you know, His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales. Um, so it, it's remarkable in that respect. But in actual fact, it was also unremarkable because it was a straightforward witness statement from someone who happened to be the Prince of Wales. And when we went in, um, I'd never met him before, obviously. I found him charming. He was very polite, friendly. Um, and uh, we sat down. It's Lord Stevens, Prince of Wales, Prince of Wales' private secretary, who was there also, Sir Michael Pete, and myself, just the four of us in the room. Uh, Lord Stevens obviously took the lead and, and, uh, and talked to Prince Charles about that note. About, and what became obvious was that Prince Charles knew nothing about that note until it became public in 2003. He knew no more than we did. And so we asked him a few questions about that. The way it worked was I wrote down the answers and, and eventually we produced a witness statement and that's all it was. And uh, as far as Charles was concerned, that was what it was about. And I have to say as well that he could have actually refused to see us. Yeah. He was only a witness. He wasn't a suspect in any way, shape or form. But in actual fact, he said, no, I want to come and speak to you. I want you to explain what's happening and I will tell you what I know. Do you think he was quite glad, in a way, to be able to put some of those theories to bed? I think, I think that uh, covers a lot of it, actually, Paul, because um, I think Lord Stevens has mentioned this before. The allegations that were being made, principally about the Duke of Edinburgh, 
were involved in Charles, that they had conspired with MI6, MI5, SAS, whoever you want, you want to talk about, to murder the mother of their grandchildren. The establishment had done this. Mm. It, it, it doesn't get any more serious than that mm. as an allegation. And therefore, Philip in particular was being attacked in the media, being attacked from certain quarters about his attitude, about certain things he said in the past. Mm. You know, he's, we all know he's never been totally PC, the Duke of Edinburgh, but I think they took this to another, another level. Mm -hmm. And so I think Charles saw this as a way of, of kind of dealing with this and saying, actually, no, this is what happened. Yeah, and I suppose as a father of two grieving sons, it, perhaps it was important for him in history to have actually been present and done that at that time. But yep. um, how long did that interview last for? Oh, it lasted about an hour, an hour and a half wow. in the drawing room in St James's Palace. Wow. And, and your work put to bed a lot of these conspiracy... Well, all of these conspiracy theories, in fact. Are you happy in your mind, there's no doubt, that Princess Diana's death was an accident? Are you absolutely... There were never any sort of nagging feelings for you after this all concluded? There's nothing you look back on and think, mm, that was an avenue that was still open to us? No, I'm absolutely convinced, totally. Um, <clears throat> and uh, at the very beginning, Lord Stephen said that we were going to be as open and transparent as we could be. And in December 2006, we published the Paget Report, which was 832 pages of the police investigation. Lord Stevens put that on the internet. Anybody in the world could read the work we'd done, if you wanted to. It's, it's, it's a serious document, it takes a lot of reading. And so we'd always taken that view, we are going to put it all out mm. there. And I believe every word that's in the Paget document, I stand by every word that's in the Paget document, and it's my absolute total belief, it was a terrible, tragic accident in which three people lost their lives and one other person had their life yeah. turned upside down. And for you, it was a terrible combination of no seatbelt, paparazzi certainly chasing yeah. them down, yeah. and the driver uh, of the car having had a few drinks. Yes. When you look at most incidents, accidents, you find there's a chain of events. And if any one of those chain of events had been different, it might not have yes. led to that happening. And, and you're quite right, Remy. For example, if they'd been wearing seatbelts, our experts tell us there was probably an 80% chance that they would have survived the accident. It would still been a terrible accident. and They'd been badly injured, but would probably not mm. have been fatal. So something like that. Mm. Yes, Henri Paul had been drinking alcohol. He certainly wasn't drunk, and we've never said that. But we all know that if you have any alcohol, it impairs your ability to drive. Mm. Well, it's absolutely fascinating. And, absolutely. And just to, I mean, you chose after 25 years to speak publicly for the first time. Is it a relief to you to finally be able to put your voice to those 832 pages that I'm sure you yeah. annotated? Yeah, it's not so much a relief. It, it was more a considered judgment because we published the Operation Paget Report. It's all out there. We gave evidence at the royal inquests that took place at the Royal yeah. Court of Justice. It took six months in public in front of a jury of people drawn from society, mm -hmm. that came to the same conclusion. And what drove certainly Lord Stevens and I and some of the other Paget members who were involved in this documentary is the fact that we knew there was going to be a lot more focus... On the 25th, 25th anniversary. Yes. anniversary. We thought, this is probably the final chance for us to right. say, it. this is what we believe. And I well, keep on saying it, but it's astonishing that it's been 25 years. We all remember, don't we, where we were when we found out that Princess Diana had died. But David Douglas... What an astonishing career you've had. Thanks so much for coming in today. It's been fascinating to, to hear your account of all of that. Thank You're you. Uh, the documentary Investing Diana, uh, Death in Paris, starts on Channel 4 on uh, August 21st.